deliver them, God. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just pray, God. We just pray for a mighty move of God among us tonight, Lord. And we're going to give you praise and glory and honor for all of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord.
keep me. Jesus, keep me from all. is my plea. Oh, hallelujah. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be. Oh, let it be. Oh, Lord, let it be. Oh, just a closer. Just a closer walk. To 
so dear comfort I get from God's own word Woo. yet when I face the chilling hand of death where could I go where could I go but oh, aren't you so glad we can go to the Lord Woo. where could I Where could I go? 
Cause I love so deep Comfort Comfort I get from God's own word Oh, yeah When I face The chilling hand of death Where could I go? Bless 
done great things hallelujah he has done great things yes he has hallelujah he has done great things bless his holy bless the lord place open your mouth and just begin to bless the Lord hallelujah with your words hallelujah with what he's done in your life with how he's helped you how he's healed you how he's strengthened you how he's delivered you how he saved you hallelujah oh hallelujah glory to God hallelujah Jesus
done great things. He has done great things. Oh, he has, he has done great things. Bless his holy name. He's done great things for he has
Yes, yes, somebody run her a mic real quick. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of his saints. Let Israel 
Rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and heart. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hands. Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you cared. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you, because you care. Oh, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care, can you tell him? Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Oh, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Oh, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Tell him, saints. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you cared, oh Jesus, I love you. I, anybody he cared for you, Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus, I love you. I love you because you cared, oh Jesus, I love you. I love. And Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Oh, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Tell me. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Because you cared one more time. Jesus, I love you, I love. Jesus. Jesus. Because you cared. Jesus, I love you. Oh, yes, I do. Jesus, I love you. Oh, because you care. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. People miss so much when they don't come to the midweek service. If they can be here and just not be in here, man, whoo. I feel bad for them because we are being blessed tremendously by being here tonight. The presence of the Lord is wonderful to watch over live stream. And man, it's also something to be here. And I thank God that he has allowed us to be here. And I thank God for his goodness and his mercy over our life. I want to talk to you tonight um, just for a little bit here. And I want you to turn your Bibles with me, if you would, to John, the 21st chapter and the 15th verse. John 21 and verse 15. Thank you, Lord. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. And I want to preach to us just for a few moments tonight from this simple subject, lovest thou me, lovest thou me. Um, Brother Earl and I were having lunch today, and we were just talking, and I was, I was talking about the need for uh, our homes to be strengthened, and because saints of God, it doesn't work backwards. It's homes are strengthened, churches are strengthened, churches are strengthened, fellowship is strengthened. It doesn't work the other way around. Everything that we have in God starts in the doors of our homes. Our children's very foundation starts in the home. Um, Some of us who came from good families, stable families, parents that loved one another, uh, fathers that were in the home, mothers that were in the home, we may not understand or be able to reference how someone else may be acting in their life because we do not have that point of reference. And so what seems strange to you and I is their normal. And what seems normal to us is strange to them because everything happens from the base level of a child's experience within their home. And many people have experienced very difficult times in their homes because either their parents were ungodly or their parents were hypocritical Christians uh, or crisis, death breaks out, untimely death breaks out. And as a result of all of those things, their very perspective of life has been fashioned because of the home. And we as parents must take that so so soberly into our spirit that however my children will react to life will be largely based upon the experience that they had in their homes. And unfortunately, because we are who we are by where we have been, we recreate that normal in our children. They recreate that normal in their children. And then you will have generations that go on into addictions and divorce, infighting, uh, instability, inconsistency, because that's the normal. 
However my father reacted to my mother will be how I react to my wife. However my wife's mother reacted to her husband will be how she reacts to me. Or we will react to each other from the opposite end of the spectrum because we're not going to be like our moms and dads. And if you look at yourself, you have to understand that everything that you are was not developed necessarily as you grow older. All of the foundation is when you're a child. And so we get married, and what do we do? We either reproduce what we couldn't stand at home because we have no other point of reference. We have no other information. Or we go to the other side of the spectrum and we go overboard the other way because we can't stand the thought of being like that. And that's how we react to life. But thank God for the word. Because the word is what centers us. The word is what takes us from either side of this chasm. And it centers us. And it causes us to develop our homes in a way that will please the Lord. Raise our children in a way that will please the Lord. Serve God in a way that will please him. Love each other in a way that will please him. Because this is our only pure point of reference. Everything else is distorted by our experiences. So the only way to get the distortion out of our life is for us just to come to this word and say, Lord, how would you have me to react to my life? We have a lot of Christians that go around and they claim love, but it's only a communicated emotion. But I want you to understand love is not a communicated emotion. It is an action. Jesus said, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, feed my sheep. In other words, what he's saying is if you love me, you'll do something. You'll do what I ask you to do if you love me. And there's a lot of people that say they love Jesus but are not willing to do what he said. They're not willing to adhere to the word of God because in all reality, they have really a better idea about what normal and real and um, stability and consistency looks like in spite of the word of God. But Jesus said, if you love me, you are going to keep my commandments. He said, if any man will love me, he'll keep my words. Because loving him is more than just rhetoric. Loving him is obedience. Loving him is doing what he asked us to do. Loving him is obeying him in every area of our life. Whether that be husbands to wives, wives to husbands, parents to children, saints to the church, the church to the saints, the ministry to it all. Obeying God in our finances. Amen. Not just in our giving, but in our stewardship over what he blesses us with. All of these things come because we love him. Because our love for him declares to us that he knows what is right. And everything he has required from us is indeed what is best for us. Look at somebody near you and just tell them it's best for us. It's best for us. And so in order to declare the love that we have for God, we have to do something. God's love has always been actionable to us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. God's love has always been tangible. It's always been visible. Even in his chastening of his children, his discipline toward us is love. Love is not do what you want and I'll accept you. Love is do what I want and you'll be like me. 
Because God's predetermined purpose for every child of God is to become like Jesus Christ. And so love is something we do more than something we say. I think somewhere along the line, whether it be in our homes or in the church house or in our relationship with the Lord at all, altogether, we think that all that is required of us is to communicate emotion. But really what the Lord is requiring of, requiring of us is active obedience. For he said, if you love me, you'll keep my words. If you love me, you'll obey my commandments. If you love me, you'll do what I've told you to do. If you love me, you'll obey what I've asked you to do. Because that's love. And so many of God's people only love God in rhetoric. He said it this way. These people worship me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. In other words, I hear what they say. But really, I'm watching what they do. They're calling out Hosanna right now. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. But give them just a couple of days and they'll cry crucify him. Because ultimately their love is no more than just words coming out of their mouth. But saints of God, I want to love him from the heart. I want to love him with all that I am. I want to love him with every part of my being. I want to love him not just with my words, but with my actions. I want to love him by implementing his word in my home. I want to love him by raising my children by his word. I want to love him by obeying and submitting myself to the authority of God that has been given to me. I want to love him. I, it, it, I want to love him by going to his house. I want to love him by worshiping him in the beauty of holiness. I want to love him by taking the abilities that he has put in me and offer them back to him so that he might be glorified in my life because I want people to see my good works and glorify my father which is in heaven. Listen, if your love is no more than a Sunday service and a 30 minute rhetorical response to God who has been keeping you all week long, then your love is very shallow. But my God, when you wake up on Monday and still love him enough to, good God, still love him enough to love your wife like Christ loved the church. When you love him so much that when you get up to Monday, you wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands. When you love him so much that when you see the foolishness that is bound in the heart of your child, you will use the rod of correction to drive it far from them because you love him. It's not about what you want. It's not about what you desire. It's it's not about what makes you comfortable. It's not about what pleases you. It's about what pleases him because I love him. My love is something that I do. It's not just something that I say. Hallelujah. But see, we have that in our mind. We have that in our mind. We think, well, I told you I loved you. I told you I loved you. But your actions... Your actions are outing you. Because what you say is not what you do. God's looking for what you do, not for what you say. And so if I love him, I'm going to keep his words. If I love him, I'm not going to let sorcery in my home. Even if that is by the spirit of rebellion. And brothers, that starts with you and me. If I am rebelling against the Lord by not being the priest of my home, if my wife has to drag me to church instead of me dragging her to church, then there's rebellion in my spirit. If as a man, I'm always make, I'm the one making the excuses why we don't have time to serve the Lord like we should, then that's rebellion in me. 
See, sorcery starts somewhere in the home. Witchcraft has its roots somewhere. And a lot of people think, well, if I get the horror movies out, the witchcraft will go. If I get, if I get the movies of witchcraft, that'll go. But I'm going to tell you, children of God, much of what is witchcraft in our homes has nothing to do with the movies we have in our library because a child of God wouldn't have those movies in their library. Really, much of the witchcraft that goes on in our home is because of the rebellion that is permitted in the midst of the home because it is as the sin of witchcraft. And we could say, I love you, Jesus, but if our children are rebellious, if our children are uncorrectable, if our children are untamable, if our children run the house, if our children cannot be sternly spoken to, if our children cannot be spanked, then there's sorcery in the house. And it's not the child that is the root of the sorcery. It is the parent that will not endure what they must to drive the rebellion out of their heart. It is actually the rebellion in the parent that is rebelling against the word of God that is causing the rebellion in the child. Most of our children's rebellion started with us. It started because we wouldn't stop it. It started because we allowed them to run over us. It started because we didn't stop their line. It started because when they bowed up on us to try to give us orders, we didn't look at them and say, no, no, I'm the adult here. You don't give me orders. Go to your room. It started because we allowed them to argue with us. It started with, with us because we allowed them to lie to us. It started with us. It's not them. It's what we permitted in their life because we were rebelling against God. Well, I don't discipline my children like that. And, and, and we know. You can tell children who are disciplined and who, children who are undisciplined by the way they react to authority. When authority speaks to them and it doesn't move them, that's because you're not moving them. And the rebellion is in you. The rebellion is in you because we don't want to do the hard work that it takes to train children to stop at authority. So what do we do? We plead with them. And then when we get tired of pleading with them, we just look over it because we're exhausted. But that's rebellion in me. When I should have taken the rod of correction. And every time that rebellion presented itself, I should have dealt with it with the rod of correction until the child understands that there indeed is consequences to the rebellion. What did I do? Do it one more time. I've had to tell you three times. Why did they get three times? Because there's rebellion in you. It's rebellion in you. It's because you don't honor God's word. It's because you don't love God. You see, it's not just in tears at the altar. It's not just in hands in the pew. It's, 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 it's beyond that. It's what you do. And you can worship God with your lips, but if you will not institute the word of God into your homes, you don't love him. It's just words. If husbands don't love their wives until their, their wives feel the love from them. See, see, my wife should not have to conjure up a feeling to try to justify why she doesn't feel loved. Well, I think he loves me. I mean, surely he loves me. It should be communicated with her to the point that she knows I love her. But not just in words, but in action. Amen. If you're ugly to your wife constantly, I don't care how many times you tell her you love her, she's not going to believe what you say. Because love is action. Love provokes you to do something. It doesn't just provoke you to say something. So if as a husband, you're not showing her you love her, my, my grandfather told me one time, he said, 
his dad told told his 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 uh, my dad's great grandmother went to to her husband and said, "You don't tell me you love me anymore." He said, "Well, when we got married, did I tell you I loved you?" And she said, yes, you did. He said, well, if I change my mind, I'll let you know. That's a bad idea. I've not been the best at that. I'm, 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 I'm a very emotionally detached person. You'd be surprised. At that. It, it's hard for me to get emotional. It's hard for me. I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's a place in me that God's got to heal because being emotionally vulnerable is very terrifying to me. That may sound crazy to you, but it is very terrifying to me, especially in front of a woman. Being emotionally vulnerable is terrifying to me. And so I've not been the best at showing my love to Sister Chandra in the way that she would continually feel loved. So there's sometimes she looks at me and says, I don't feel like you love me. And I have to look at myself and say, man, did I disconnect again? Did, did I do that again? See, it's, it's, it's hard for me because our home wasn't overly emotional. It just wasn't. We were just not overly emotional people. Some of that came from my parents raising. Just, you didn't just express open emotion. So I feel like this little bitty toddler running around in the house just tearing up everything when I have to deal with emotion. I dropped my mom off yesterday to my dad, and, 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 or not to my dad, but we dropped the car off, and he kissed her in public, and I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. But that's a place in me that God has to deal with to mature me. So that my wife can feel loved because if I'm not proving my love to her, then I'm in rebellion against God's word. Amen. I don't have a mind, I don't have a problem showing my son love. I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't have a problem showing my grandkids love. But when it comes to my wife, it's difficult. It's not anything she's done, it's me. It's me. I'm just terrified to be emotionally wrong. I don't want to think I'm weak. You know what women do when they find a weak man. <laughs> so I got to keep that strong side about me. She'll say, I love you. I'll say, yeah, I love you back. But with my grandkids, I'm like, I love you. Well, come here, give Bobby the kiss. Because <laughs> they can't run over me. And Xander's got to eat. But that's something the Lord has to work on me because I want my wife to know that I love her. But also, we are living in a feminist generation that is doing everything in their power to emasculate men around them. Because there's something so broken and scarred inside of the women of this generation that they think if they're not as good good as a man, then they're nobody at all. Well, you ain't never going to be as good as a man because you ain't a man. And a man ain't never going to be as good as a woman because he's not a woman. My God in heaven, be the best woman you can. Be the best man you can. But please, sisters, don't try to be as good as a man. And please, brothers, don't try to be good as a woman. Because you will be walking around here with your, list, your wrist limp and a nice little lisp, <laughs> and we're going to cast that one out. <laughs> That's a whole other spirit we're going to have to get rid of. But it's the same way in the homes. Wives running roughshod over their husbands. You know, if I came into this church, if right now I decided to just go off on Jesus, just lay him out. And use every word in my vocabulary and others that aren't there. To let him know exactly how displeased I am with him. What would you all do here? You would leave. Because the head of every man is, is Christ. 
but who's the head of the woman? So if you wouldn't want me to go off on Jesus, why would you go off on your husband? You're doing the same thing to him that I would to the Lord. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't know why in the world somebody is calling me right in the middle of service. If you're watching online, you're calling me on Facebook. I'm up here preaching. I will not answer it. <laughs> Folks, just blow my mind. I'm not answering it. All right, maybe, and it's a woman too, so that may have really messed her up. God, it's a social media world, isn't it? But the Bible said it is better to go up into a rooftop and into a corner than to live in a house with a brawling woman, with a woman that just brawls, that she just constantly, rawr. Amen. Nobody needs that. And I'm going to tell you right now, brothers, I want to share this with you. I better never find out any of y'all putting your hands on your wife other than in a way of compassion because I am not beyond putting hands on you. I'm dead serious. There ain't no man of God should ever put his hands on his wife unless it is with love and kindness. If you're so angry you want to hit her, Go outside and punch a tree. But don't you dare put your hands on your wife. She's not your personal punching bag, you coward. You wouldn't fight a real man, I guarantee you. You're going to hit your wife because she's the weaker vessel. You're not afraid of her. But a real man would never, I've never, ever. I know people have said I've beaten, abused my wife and lock her in basements and do all this stuff. I tell people all the time, no, no, she's the one locking people in basements. I'm not. <laughs> she's not really. See, it's going to go around the Internet. See, we had it all wrong. The information was just skewed. But I've never put a hand on my wife to harm her because I don't need to. It's better to have a good run, brothers, than a bad stand. Sometimes you just need to get away from the situation. But sisters, we should never, ever provoke a situation that would cause anger and hostility to come up into the spirit of a man. Now, if it's just because he's an angry, hateful person, then he needs to come to the altar, and we need to cast some spirits out of him. But if it's because your mouth is out of control, and you won't quit railing on him, and you won't quit brawling at him, my goodness, you're in rebellion. Brother, if you're treating her with anything but the love of God, you're in rebellion. And that's what unstabilizes our homes. Men, I don't care if your wife's spending up all the money. You're the one at fault for that. God called you to be the steward of your house. Somebody said, well, we have two bank accounts. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and these two shall become one flesh. I told the brothers the other night, I said, if she's spending you out of house and home, take the debit card. And I dare you sisters to get mad about that. If you're spending your home into bankruptcy and your spending habits are so awful that your family is constantly in financial trouble no matter how much money they make, then you don't you dare rebel against your husband when he cuts it off. No, ma'am. Debit card is gone. I'm shutting it down. You don't have a right to destroy your family financially. But, brother, you better make sure you don't either. Just because you've got spending habits and you've got hobbies, your first responsibility before God is to make sure that your family is provided for. And that means if your home, is ha if your home has bad spending habits, it is your fault. You're the one who's supposed to be taking care of that. You're the one who's supposed to be overseeing. You should never get into financial trouble because of your wife or your children. You are the steward of those finances. 
And somebody said, well, my wife handles it better. Well, that's fine, but you are still to oversee it. You're still to be looking at it and making sure that everything's going where it's supposed to be going and making sure that your house is not being spent out of house and home because of bad spending habits, whether it's you because you can't stop eating out all the time or whether it's her because she's got to have new clothes every month. Amen. And if you are not being good stewards of your finances, you are in rebellion against God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. I'm talking about love. Don't you want to prove your love for the Lord? Well, how can you say you love God and go in bankrupt all the time? I understand crisis happens in life, and there are times we can't help it. I'm talking about your spending habits. I'm not talking about because you lose a job. I'm not talking because medical crisis comes upon your home. I'm talking about because you are spending money every time it gets in your hand. As fast as it gets in your hand, it's gone. That is your problem, brother. You say, but it's my wife. No, that's your problem, brother. Yeah, but she's the one. No, it's your problem, brother. You are the head of the house. You are the priest of the home. You are the one that should be cutting off that source. Well, my wife will kill me. I mean, are you a man at all? There are times I've had to look at Sister Chandra and say, no. She didn't like it. But it wasn't going to go any further than that. I don't care how much she would have yelled and rant and raped. It made no difference to me. Because I have to stand before God and give an answer to him for everything that goes on in my home. And my wife will not be the cause of me being a bad steward of my finances. You say, well, she won't stop spending money. Change the bank account. Change the bank account. Change the bank account. Do whatever you got to do. Cut it off until you are stable, until your family is not in financial peril all the time. That's your job. Glory to God. But sisters, let's help our husbands. Brothers, get your spending habits under control. Sisters, get your spending habits under control. Some of y'all can't tithe because you can't stop eating out. Some of y'all can't tithe because you can't stop getting your nails done every month. Some of y'all can't stop tithing because you can't, you know, you got to have your favorite game in your new game system at 35 and 40 years old. Amen. I'm a grown man, dog. I don't need a PlayStation in order to have fun. Amen. Ask my son the last time I got on an Xbox with him. You do mature and grow up. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. Come on. I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put away those childish things. You want to be a man? Put your toys away. Glory to God. Oh, yeah, you sisters. Praise God. Go ahead and applaud. But why don't you stop getting your nails done all the time? Why don't you stop getting your hair did all the time? Sometimes you just got to endure until your family can get where it needs to be. Glory to God. That's vanity. If you can't go without something because you have to have it to produce a certain public appearance, you're vain. You're vain. Come on, sisters. Come on. You're clapping real good. We've got to be good stewards of the finances that God gives us. And part of that is in giving to God. Tithes and offerings. And if our financial situation is in such a place that I'm having to pick over McDonald's and Jesus, go ahead and eat the pink goo. Do whatever you got to do. But I'm going to give my tithes and my offerings to Jesus. There are times we've been tight financially and we couldn't do anything else. But I guarantee you my tithes were paid. My offering was given. Why? Because I love him. And the tithe belongs to him. It belongs to him. And I say I love him, but I steal from him. I rob from him. No, no, I love him. So if, if, what I, if something I have belongs to him, I want to make sure he gets it. Woo. 
Oh, yeah. I saw y'all's responses the other day on Facebook. So, blessed quietness. <laughs> I'm going to give to Jesus. I'm going to give what, to the Lord what belongs to the Lord. I'm never going to defraud him. I'm never going to defraud him. I want to make sure everything that belongs to him gets to him. Because he's given to me so much, I'm not taking anything else from him that belongs to him. Amen. That means we've got to be careful with our money. Got to be careful with our finances. We've almost, as a church wholesale, given over to the electronic age. <laughs> I don't even know how much money Sister Carol counts or Sister Cheryl counts anymore in the offering. But if that's what it takes for you to maintain that faithfulness, keep giving that way. That's why we provided it. it. I mean, it goes to the bank account. It pays the same bills. But ultimately, it should be a joy for you because you love him. And the Lord loves a cheerful. Amen. Glory to God. I want to make sure in every area of my life he knows I love him. How I'm raising my children. You could say you love God, but if your children are undisciplined or they are uncorrectable, you do not love God like you think you do. The Bible said children are inherited from the Lord. In other words, the Lord has entrusted them to you. But then you won't discipline them. You won't train them. You won't develop them. How can you say you love God when he gives you something and you will not handle it with the care? He has given you instruction to handle it with. Amen. Glory to God. Won't tell your children about the Lord. Won't make sure your children are taken care of. Listen, we come from a generation of latchkey kids. And I'm having to pastor some of them. And I feel for them. I'm having to deal with some of them even not here uh, in other places. And I feel for them. Because when the parents should have been home, taking care of the child. Listen, I'm telling you, say, listen, listen to me. I don't care how meager you have to live. If you're a husband and a wife, Whatever sacrifices you have to make now to make sure that mama can be at home with them children, make them. You will not have a house that everybody will applaud. You will not have vehicles that everyone will stand there and awe at. You will not have the money to take grand vacations and you will not have the money to always buy the name brand clothing. But the generation of latchkey kids don't even know how to operate as an adult. And some of them are not even past areas of their life as a child. Because parents were not there training them. They were out there getting money. Out there getting money. Got to have that money. Got to get that American dream. Got to have my best life now. Listen, if you want that, Joe Olstein is just a few hundred miles away from here. You can attend his church. But I want to see a church full of mamas raising their babies. Not babies having to stay there while mom and dad is going out and getting the money. Live meeker. Cut back. Sister Chandra and I did it. I was making almost nothing, but we did it. She got to stay home and raise all of her kids. We lived on much of nothing. But I will never regret the suffering that we had to go through because all of her kids got to have their mama at home. Children need their parents at home. They need their mother at home. God's given something to that woman to nurture their chi her children that men do not have. That's the reason why I don't believe it's staying home dads. The Bible said a man that will not work should not eat, and he that will not provide for his home, especially that of his own household, is denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Mama shouldn't have to go out work while daddy stays at home. You go get a job, brother, and then you all make the necessary sacrifices until those children are raised. They didn't ask to be born. You did what it took. You liked it. You enjoyed it. They were brought forth, and now they're having to suffer for it. No, no. Make sure that the babies are at home with their mama. Cut it back, I'm telling you. We lived in a very meager home. 
We drove very meager cars. We wore clothes until they wore out. I still do it to this day. I've had this shirt for four years. Doesn't bother me. Still nice. Chandra doesn't like the flap in the back, but I don't care. Keeps me cool. But ultimately, we just wore clothes till they wore out. We, we lived on $125 a week in groceries with six of us. We went and shopped and got the least expensive of everything. We didn't have everything. We couldn't go on huge vacations. We couldn't. Listen, your kids will never remember that junk. Oh, I took, my, I took our children in, to, you know, to, to Mount Rushmore. I don't remember that. But what they will remember is the time you spent with them. So there sometimes we had to have staycations. We just did stuff here. But it was more important for me that Chandra was at home taking care of her kids. And it was important for her, and she didn't have to miss that because I was willing to go work. And I was willing to just do without whatever we had to do without. So she got to stay at home and raise her children. It's important. And if I am unwilling to do that because of a greedy spirit, because of an ego, then I can't say I love God because his word tells me this is how this should happen. We want a Proverbs 31 woman, but we don't want to put her in position to be that. Uh, all right, another one. Y'all were shouting a minute ago. <laughs> Mama needs to be at home to deal with that rebellion every time it raises up its head. She needs to be there to consistently discipline and train the child. And we shouldn't have to send them off to other people to be parented. That's our job. God gave that child to us. If he, was wanting to, if he was wanting the daycare personnel to raise them, they would have been born to them. But they were born to us. We're the ones that are supposed to be putting our principles in them, training them in the way that we see in the word of God, developing their Christian character in the way we believe it to be in the word of God not giving them over to someone else so that they can raise them with whatever principles they have just so that we can go make some money so we can have the life we want. That's rebellion. That's rebellion in us. And that's the reason why our homes are constantly in, in upheaval and there's trouble in our homes. Why? Because it's sorcery. It's rebellion in me that's causing that chaos in my home. It's rebellion in my wife that's causing that chaos in my home. I can't even blame the children. It's really our fault. We're the ones that have to tell the Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and that's all good. It's great to sing it. It's better to show it. It's better to live it. Amen. I want to see our homes become so strong and such an example of godliness that the world has to take notice and say, man, we're over here struggling, no peace. We got all the money in the world, ain't got no peace. Our kids are going crazy. But here you are over here, just living a meager life. But your children are so well behaved. And, and I'm going to tell you, you mamas that stay at home, if your children are misbehaved, it's because you're lazy. That's all it boils down to. You're just lazy. You're with them every day, every hour, and you're not disciplining them, and they're misbehaved, and they don't respect authority. Don't you blame nobody else. You're the one there with them every day. It's just you're lazy. You're lazy. And God hates slothfulness. You're there to train them every day. You say, man, it gets monotonous and boring. Well, you had them. They didn't ask to be born. It's your job. 
if you're at home with your children every day, they should be developing. They sh their, their, their character should be developing. Their personality should be developing. Their discipline should be developing. And if you won't do it, it's because you're lazy. That's all it boils down to. You give, put a tablet or a toy in front of them and let that entertain them, and you just do what you want to do, and you never address their lack of discipline, don't you blame nobody else for that. And don't you put a syndrome on it. Don't you put a diagnosis on it. Let King Jesus diagnose it. It is parental laziness. That's what it boils down to. But we have to be on guard because we want people to know we love the Lord. Well, how do they know? Because we're obeying his commandments, keeping his word. Brothers, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to speak joyfully about the house of God. You ought to be the one who's excited to come to church. Amen, because you're the priest of the home. You're the priest, not Pastor Jared. You're the priest of the home. Your family should be excited about serving Jesus. They should love Jesus. They should be talking about Jesus. Amen. Your children should be being taught the word of God, not just at church and children's church, not just at the school, but because you're doing your job. So that means that you can't sit down in front of a TV for every meal. Sometimes you need to gather around the table. In fact, you should all the time. Gather around the table and talk to your children about the Lord. Write the word of God upon their foreheads and in their hearts. Amen. If you won't, brother, you're lazy. You're lazy. Well, I've worked all day. Well, you did well there. Good job. But when you come home, make sure you talk to your children about the Lord. Make sure they understand the goodness of God. Make sure they understand how God has made a way for you. Make sure they know how your test, what your testimony is of how God has dealt with your life. Mama, do it for them. Don't let those children have to come to children's church to hear about Jesus. My God, do it in your home. Hallelujah. This is a supplement. That's all this is. This is a vitamin shot. The church will never be able to make up for what you are not doing in your home. It is starting at the home. Their foundation is their home. Their teaching is started in their home. Their discipline is started at their home the worship starts at their home their honoring God starts at the home everything starts in your doors the church is just a supplement to encourage what you're already taking care of so brothers love your wives take care of your family provide for them your family shouldn't be in financial straits because you are too lazy to work work it's your job it's your responsibility and part of the way a man shows he loves God is by working and taking care of his family that's, that's part of the way we show we love God Lord we love you because I love you I want to provide for my family because I don't want to be worse than an infidel I want to be received of you I want to please you so go to work don't call in sick because you stayed up too late at night go to work Show up. Be responsible. Be that guy that everybody looks at and sees the favor of God on him. Be that guy who gets promoted. Doesn't deserve it, but gets it. Doesn't have the education, but gets it. Why? Because the favor of God is on him. Because he's a faithful man. He's a faithful man. He loves God, and God favors him because of his love for God and because he has an excellent spirit. Mamas, make sure, wives, make sure that when your husband comes home, he doesn't come to a filth trap. He doesn't come to toys all over. He shouldn't have to break his neck coming down the steps because you were sitting and watching the soap operas all day long. You should be taking care of your house, cleaning up your home, cooking meals. Amen. A, a, a husband should not have to come home and just coalesce and say, well, let's go eat because you refuse to cook. Well, I'm not a good cook. Praise God. We got wonderful cooks in the house of God. Get with them and tell them, teach me how to cook for my family. But your husband shouldn't have to pay hard-earned money going out to eat all the time because you're too lazy to cook. Amen. He should come home. He's been working all day. He should come home. There should be peace in the home. Food should be ready. Amen. 
That's your job. Read Proverbs 31. Y'all keep talking about Proverbs 31. Are you living Proverbs 31? That's your job. That's the command of the Lord. That is the instructions of the Lord how to be a virtuous woman. And if you'll be that woman, your children won't have to say, my mom was a hell raiser. Which to some of us, that is, that is comical. But to some of us that had to live that, not me necessarily. My mom always took care of us. Food was always on the table. Loved the Lord. But there are people in here who have had to live with a brawling woman in the house. With a woman that couldn't keep her mouth shut. There are sometimes, sisters, you've got to close your mouth and take it to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Your husband walks in from a hard day of work. <laughs> I don't know why I have to stay here all the time with these kids. They're so unruly. I got, I got, I got, I got. Whoa! Call him on the phone while he's on the way to work to cuss him out because he didn't, he didn't do what you wanted him to do. My Lord, what rebellion in you. What ungodliness in you. That's not, good. That's not you showing you love God. That's showing that you love yourself. Well, if mama ain't happy, then God is not pleased. Amen. And brothers, my gosh, make, them, make sure the environment of your home is to such a place that your wife is not having to fight you to raise her children. She's with them all day. You're not. I know you can't imagine your little angel acting like that, but they are the devil sometimes. And if she needs to discipline them, hold your peace. Some of the things that I regret the most in, 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 in us raising our children were the times that I stepped in when I should have stepped out. That did breed a certain amount of disrespect for my wife and my children. Because they knew if she went too far, dad would step in and stop her. So let her start with it. Dad, ah, I just kidding me. Ah. She probably hadn't hit him two times. But they knew if they projected themselves in such a way, I would come in and rescue them because, you know, that's what dads do. We rescue our children. Let your, child, your wife know that you support her. In raising your children and let your children know that you support your wife in raising them. Amen. Amen. All right. Glory to God. I didn't get home till 1230 last night. We got at least three more hours. You can blame it on these people always having to go eat out after service. Makes me sick, you Pentecostal people. Think just because you had some good church, you've got to go eat pancakes. The devil is a liar. There will be no pancakes tonight. I'm just letting you know. Pastor Jared is tired. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Sister Rita, just hold your peace and let the Lord fight the battle. I want our homes to be so powerful, so anointed, so covered with the presence of God that when sinners walk through the door, they feel conviction at our dinner table. I'm talking about those kind of homes. Amen. Put on some worship music every once in a while, Mom. When them kids are going crazy and you've spanked them five times, now turn on some worship music and start praying over them. My God, let them know, where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Glory to God. Let them know that the Lord is the answer. And if your children are acting crazy and you've done everything you can, bring them to the altar. We'll pray over them. We'll pray over them. I'm telling you, we've done it. We've done it many times. Parents, I've done everything I can. Bring them to the altar. And we begin to pray over them. And God starts dealing with their spirits. And all of a sudden, I, I've got a different child. I don't know what happened. The Lord got involved. If you'll do your part, the Lord will make up for the rest of it. I promise you. But if we're not willing to, it's because we don't love him like we say we do. Because love is actionable. It's not just rhetoric. So let's show him, saints. Let's tell him as much as we can. But let's show him just as much. I love you, Jesus. Let's stop coming to the house of God just because it's a need. 
Come on. I need to go to church. Why don't you just want to go to church? Whew. I can't wait. I got to be at church every time the doors are open because I don't go to him just because I need a touch from him. I go to him because I want to touch him. I really want to touch. It's not about him touching me. I want to touch him. See, if you have that mentality, you love him. If you don't, you love yourself. You'd be surprised how many people go to church on a needs based. Amen. Motivation. They do. But why don't we serve God because we love him? Why don't we obey him because we love him? Why don't we give to him because we love him? Why don't we be husbands like we're supposed to be because we love him? Wives like we're supposed to be because we love him. Parents like we're supposed to be because we love him. Let's show our children what the love of God looks like. Not because we sit there and speak so peaceably to them and plead with them and ask them to please go Hey, please don't. Do, why don't we show them the chastening of the Lord, not in harshness, not in anger, not in retribution. But if the child is stubborn and rebellious and won't do what they're asked to do, bring the rod of correction out. Discipline them accordingly. Let them know what the chastening of the Lord looks like, because there's coming a day they're going to be out of your hands and God's not going to plead with them. He's going to demand from them. Let's show them what it means to honor spiritual authority. So moms, honor your head. Men, dads, honor your head. And if we'll do this by the word of God, we'll show our children what the love of God looks like. Amen? Because if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. All right. We're going to give to the Lord tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I just want my children to know, my grandchildren to know what the love of God looks like. And it's not all. It's inconsistency. I'm going to tell you, I, 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 I struggle in certain areas, but what you will not see from me is a consistency in my service to God. Inconsistency. I love God. I love God, and I want my children and my grandchildren to know it. So I'm not up and down, inconsistent, in and out. I'm here. Amen. I want, I want my children and my grandchildren to see me faithful in the house of God. Amen. What a greater testimony that a man can give to his offspring than that he's in the house of God. Amen. That's a great testimony. Rhetoric. I'm telling you, saints of God, throw the rhetoric out. Quit just saying it. Do it. Show it. And God will know there's love there. Father, we thank you so much for the honor and the opportunity we have had to be in the house of God tonight. We thank you for your anointing that surely touched this place, for the glory of the Lord that sat down on this house. Now I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would bless these words that we have heard tonight, God, that you would sow them deeply into the good soil of our heart, that it should produce fruit in its season, because, Lord, we want to love you, not just say we do. Oh, God, help us tonight. Help us to be the men we need to be, the women we need to be, the parents we need to be, the children of God we need to be. Help us, Lord God, to be faithful to your word because we want you to know we love you, not just because we said it, Lord, but because we obeyed your word. We kept your word. Oh, God, help us to do what is right that we might please you. It's not, Lord, about earning anything. We just want you to know we love you. We love you. So, God, help us to show our love to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now I pray for this time of giving that you would bless those that have to give. Bless them abundantly as you watch over your word to perform it concerning them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give as the Lord has blessed us. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can come, saints. Give and it shall come back to you. Press pressure. Sing it, Sarita. And running over, give and it shall come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. One more time. Give and it shall come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together and running over give and it shall come back to you when you give 
you give to the Lord. Amen. We were off time, but it was really good. Amen. I enjoyed it anyway. All right. God has helped us tonight. We're so thankful for the Lord. I hope you do. I hope you apply this, saints. I'm telling you, if, you'll, if we'll apply the, because I, I don't, this church is going to have to be on a much greater scale than we are even numerically in every way for the responsibilities that we have facing us. But it's going to start at home. It's going to start when we're strengthening our homes. All right, women's prayers, Tuesday, September the 12th at 630. Um, Transform Youth Bible Study is going to be Wednesday the 13th of September after worship. And then youth group will be Saturday, September the 16th, 1 to 4. I want you guys to remember that September the 11th, which is a Monday, I will be having the oral surgery. Um, and I will, I will be down for a few days, all right? So if you call, I ain't answering. All right? Glory to God. I'll let my secretary take care of that. Where's she at? She, 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 could, she can pass on those messages to Brother Earl because he's going to have to be in charge for a few days. <laughs> Brother Earl's like, rub some dirt on it. <laughs> but I've got to have all four of my wisdom teeth taken out. I've got to have two more teeth cut out. And uh, so... They're going to put me to sleep. I've never had that before, so pray for me. Pray for me because I, I am a little bit a little bit freaked out, but I, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll wake up one way here in the resurrection one. I hope. <laughs> I better get it all under the blood before then, huh? <laughs> would you guys like to have a Labor Day picnic? How many of y'all would like to have a Labor Day picnic? All right, y'all can have a Labor Day picnic. We'll see you in the next Wednesday. I'm just joking. All right, Labor Day picnic. How many, show of hands, who would come? I don't want you to raise your hands if you ain't going to come. Now, we, I did this one time, and y'all didn't, some of y'all didn't show up. Just all the kids. Yeah, don't worry. All right, I'll tell you what. The picnic pavilion's open. If you want to have a Labor Day picnic, you can come out here and have a Labor Day picnic. Amen. We, we might come out here, I don't know, as a family. I may let Sister Shonda rest. I'm not sure that's, she is, y'all pray for her. She is in a lot of pain. Guys. She is in a lot of pain. And so pray for her that God would heal her and help her. Um, but we'll talk more about it this Sunday. We'll just, we'll just kick it around and then we'll talk about it whether we're going to have it or not. I um, want to pray for Sister Alexia Roop. She's having some health struggles as well. We want to pray for her that God would heal her. Uh, Sister Rosemary Pribble. Uh, Richard Poltz, which is Brother Jimmy's dad. Is that how you say his last name? Is that right? Okay. Um, uh, Terry, my mother-in-law, she's healing from her procedure. Uh, they have to go back to Louisiana one more time. They got to go back Saturday to pick up the rest of their stuff, and then they're turning right back around and coming here, and then that is it. It is a wash. They'll be here. So we want to pray for her. She had to have some surgery, and so let's pray for her that God would touch her. I continue to pray for Riley. So glad to see her here this evening. Amen. My daughter, uh, Victoria, my grandson, Braxton, my son, Anthony, brother, Denny Livingston, uh, in his struggle uh, with this cancer. So let's remember that, Chandra. Yes. Sister Cece Noah has had this infection that just keeps coming back over and over again. We want to pray that off of her. It's got to go in the name of Jesus. So let's pray that. Continue to remember St. Louis in your prayers, uh, that the will of God would just be done there. Um, we, we went a little bit further this past weekend. Um, I will be going down there maybe once a month now instead of every other week just to check on them during different times of the week because um, I just feel like that that is part of my responsibility. Oversight is going to be part of my responsibility, so we're going to be dealing with other churches, guys. I'm just letting you know. It's just part of who I am. It's part of what God's made me to be, and uh, so um, we, need to, we need to welcome our brothers and sisters that will come into that oversight with open arms and not with jealous spirits. Amen. Glory. I know I'm wonderful, and I know y'all love me so much, and y'all almost can't do without me. And I, Just keep pouring it on me. Go ahead. But we have to share, amen, what God has given to us with others. And uh, so we thank God for that. Oh, Brother Garrett is going to be coming up here in October, and he's going to be spending a little time with us. So I'm looking forward to that. He's coming with the, when the leaves change. 
And I told Sister Lynette, she needs to come when the leaves change. So she should come too, and uh, we could, we'll have a wonderful time together. Um, but other than that, I think we're all hearts and minds are clear. Yeah, Brother Jimmy's arm. Your arm's bothering you? Brother Brent. Okay, Brother Brent, we want to pray for him? All right. Also, we want to pray for Brother Chris's dad. Took a fall this weekend, um, but God would touch him. I, I just want to see that man call on the name of the Lord. God, just be an awesome moment. And I've witnessed to him. Others have come and witnessed to him. We've prayed over him. And so now it's in the Lord's hands. So we'll, we'll pray that God would open that opportunity for him again and again until he makes a choice. Uh, but if all hearts and minds are clear, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the honor, the opportunity we've had to be here tonight. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you for the word of God that we have heard, God. Maybe some of it challenged us. Maybe some of it God encouraged us. Maybe some of it stepped all over our toes. But, God, we want to be people that love you in action and not just in rhetoric. And that means what we do, God, as husbands, as wives, as mothers and fathers. Lord, what we do, God, in raising our children, what we do in oversight and stewardship of the resources that you give to us, how we react and are we faithful to the house of God, are we submitted to the spiritual authority that you have put over our lives? God, all of these things are us showing you that we love you. So help us, Lord, to show you how much we love you continually. Lord, now I pray for every one of these requests. Heal those that need to be healed, God. Deliver those that need to be delivered. I specifically bring Jack Crawford before you, God. Lord, bring this man to a place where he calls upon the name of Jesus and he repents of his sin, God, that he might have some place, Lord God, Lord, in you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I believe you to do an exceeding and abundant work in his life. Father, now I pray for your people as they leave this place, never your presence, just the place, that you would watch over them, keep them safe from accident and incident, and bring us all back again at the next appointed time for which we will give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Go shake somebody's hand and tell them, I love the Lord. I love the Lord.